All right. Hey, everybody. Hope you guys are all doing well. Now that my internet's back up and running. Oh, let me just make sure I'm okay. Yeah, I should be okay. There we go. We'll talk a little bit about Bitcoin here first, and then, oh, excuse me, that's Dogecoin. Bitcoin here first. Then we'll move over to Dogecoin and some of the other altcoins here going on and what's going on in the markets. Wait for people to start showing up here. I know I do know it's a, what, Saturday evening, so we'll see what happens. Ugh. Hey, Peter. Hey, Mike. Welcome back. Hey, man. Happy to be back. Hey, Alan Time as well. It's been a... It, 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 dude, last night was crazy. I didn't know what was going on. My, um... My, uh, what do you want to call it? My, um, my internet service, like on my phone, still isn't back up to regular speed. Something really crazy happened last night. I don't know what it was. Uh, I heard from a few of you guys. You guys also had friends and family that had some issues. Not all over the U.S., right? But just some had problems in Philadelphia. Some had problems in, uh, um, Louisiana. And one of my other friends had, uh, problems over in, uh, California. So it is a pretty interesting thing that, about, uh, what happened last night. I have no idea exactly what happened. I, me being my speculative self, I think it was a, a cyber attack or something like that. But uh, I've never seen something like that happen before. I lost my uh, my Wi-Fi, my uh, my TV signal. I guess that comes from the Wi-Fi since I don't have a cable. Uh, my mom lost her cable. She told me that. Um, and then you know I have AT&T as a phone provider. I lost my signal for AT&T. It was a very 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 faint um, download speed, no upload speed. And I wasn't able to do anything. It was so weird last night. I didn't know what was going on. And so I was able to get through, get to Discord. And that was the only thing I was able to get on access to because my my, my computer setup wasn't able to do anything. I um, Before I realized what was happening, I tried to message you guys on um, the stream and say, hey, but I'm having some problems. Hopefully I can like get it fixed up. But nope, it took all the way until this morning. Um, like uh, around lunchtime for me today to actually get my Wi-Fi back. I was not happy with Xfinity. I'm gonna call them and see if I can get a discount or something like that, because that is freaking messing with uh, messing with business. Hey, Morgoth, thank you so much for watching the channel. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> hey, Peter. Yes, it's Saturday, but we are old, and this is our fun now. Watching charts. Uh, you know what I was doing most of the day? Well, I went hunting today. Um, I didn't get anything. It was it was way too wet and way too um, foggy for me to see actually anything actually out there. Out there. Um, I'm working on this tutorial plan, and I'm gonna start doing the first episode tomorrow. Here, it should these should be very like short, one to three minute segments, and there's gonna be a whole bunch of one to three minute segments here. Um, but it's gonna be me talking with a brief overview of what each thing is. So, episode one, we're gonna go over the different charts: candlestick charts, bar charts, line charts, area charts, right? And then a little little tidbit of trading view, just to make sure you guys sign up for it because this is where you guys are probably gonna. You know, this is the software you guys are probably going to use. And they have a free version and a paid version, but most of you guys, I think, like the free version. Episode 2, we're going to be, you know, talking about charts and to using charts to combat your emotions. If you guys understand how to read a chart, uh, it'll make your life a lot easier. But we'll talk about it a little bit later. And I know most of you guys have already done this, but if you guys can, um, remember, I did put up a new channel here. And that new channel is for... Uh, this new channel is only for what I would want to call like educational videos and you know updates on breakouts and whatnot because nobody ever nobody gets alerts for them on my current channel. So if you guys do want to subscribe to that one, it'll take like a quick second. And, like I really do appreciate it. Um, but yeah, so you know I'll, I'll do the hedge fund stuff. Like if, if I see an interesting flow or the breakout and stuff like that, I'll let you know. Like I told you, this one, this breakout right here is about EIX uh, from the other day. Let me go back over here to this account. Um, well, actually, I don't need to right now. But yeah, I told you guys about EIX, and uh, I don't know actually how it's like EIX, so today is sad, I shouldn't do anything, but since I told you you guys about it a few days ago, oh, this is on the Bitcoin chart, um, it has gone up a little bit, pop this, this is the breakout I was just talking to you guys about here, and uh, earnings isn't until November 2nd, so I'm going to wait to see how it is, but so far, the profits from EIX have been good, um, Duke has also been doing pretty well, uh, also, Cones hasn't been doing as well. Well, Cone broke out and came back down. Redfin, waiting. This one hasn't, hasn't uh, popped just yet. I'm going to hold this one through earnings, though. CVS is doing okay. I just bought CVS Friday, actually, so I'm hoping it's going to have a good uh, good turnaround as well. Okay, back over to Bitcoin, though. All right, let me turn this one down a little bit. Hey, JXfinity, uh, too big to fail. Good luck on discount. Every once in a while, they do it for me. I can complain. I can say it's business and whatnot, and, you know, they, they've done it for me before. Pretty much, I just yell. I don't yell, but I, I pretty much like, come on, dude. Like, come on. 
And I don't think they, they I don't think English is their first language when I deal with the Xfinity support, so usually I don't think they care too much. But yeah, um, I'm gonna wait a little bit though because like I feel like there's so many people complaining to Xfinity. So many people complaining to Xfinity. Alright, but right now guys, we have support still for Bitcoin at 58,768. We're still doing okay at the moment. You can see we uh, come back down. We're leveling out, which is actually pretty nice. I'm interested to see what happens today and this day candle, which is, has about 21 hours left, and the next day candle. Because we are going to run into the 20 day moving average here. I think in a few days, don't hold me to this, I think we might take a little bit more of a tumble a few days from now. So just be prepared for uh, that possibility here. Um, that's just kind of uh, kind of a gut feeling for me. I'm, I'm waiting to see how this... Um, we interact with the 20 day moving average. I'm hoping we're able to bounce off of it and continue moving on. But the way we're looking at the moment, you know, how often, how often do you guys see charts that look like, like this, where it just comes up and it's a complete U like that. It can happen. I just, oh geez, I just don't see it too much. Oh, okay, there we go. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll wait and see, but uh, you know, just, just be careful here. I sold some of my positions right here as we broke down from this trend line from all the way back here from September 30th. And I'm gonna be buying back in. Actually, I took a little bit of a nibble about um, an hour ago, a small, small nibble. Um, about like 5% back in from everything I sold over here. So I'm gonna start taking a little bit more nibbles uh, going forward. And then uh, what that did is actually, that also freed me up some money so I can invest in anything that I see is popping. Right now, Sheba's is moving up a little bit as well. And that's something I like to see uh, right here, very fast. Okay. But that's what I think is going to happen short term. I'm just waiting to see if that's confirmed or not. About two days from now, we'll have a better understanding of what's going on. But that major support level, guys, is 58,768. Now let me go back over here to the 15 for Bitcoin. Okay, right, there we go. And let's just look. Let's look at Doge here. Doge is looking okay at the moment. It's still going sideways after breaking it and breaking the trend line here. We have to watch this trend line. Hope, hopefully, we're staying above here. If we do dip, dip down below this trend line, guys, uh, I mean, I'm still going to hold since we are holding this longer trend, but I'm just not going to be as, too excited about it. One thing I'm looking for is for us to break above the 200 sometime in the next week or this week and next, this Saturday, next week. I think Dogecoin is going to pop in the next about seven days or so. And if you actually look at the weekly chart here, We've had three weeks of, uh, excuse me, four weeks of growth so far. This week candle ends in about 20 hours and 54 minutes, so we'll get there. And we're, we're gonna try to break out above the 20 week moving average here. So I'm hoping we can get a little bit of momentum here and try to get back up to at least 30 cents or so. And then from there, you know, we'll, we'll have to reassess. But for now, you know, doesn't look too bad. Grinding back up, we're having some trouble breaking above the 20 moving average on the weekly chart. I think we're going to have a chance of breaking out above that and having and holding above that as well. So we'll see how that works out. Uh, anything else here? Uh, let's go to the 15 for Doge as well. I think these are mostly going sideways here. Let's do a quick peek at everything I see over here though. Here's the dailies for Doge. Ethereum. Ethereum broke out going sideways now. That's fine. Ethereum has a pretty uh, aggressive trend line, guys, if you guys want to look at this something like that so this is going to come down here uh, uh, not, not necessarily come down but it's going to probably end up going sideways Matic broke out again it's coming back down a little bit here I hope it's able to hold though Matic has been pretty uh, pretty volatile as of late ADA still grinding hmm. ADA is worth watching it's going to have a big drop or it's going to have a big pop I'm hoping big pop will we'll have to see. Uh, XRP, that yeah, looks fine for now. BitTorrent, fine for now. It's actually pretty similar to XRP. Getting closer to the trend lines. Ethereum Classic, nothing for now. Litecoin, holding over the 200. XLM, sideways, fine. EOS, nothing. STMX can be due for a little pop here pretty soon. Anything else I see here? Oh, and Sheeb. There we go. Sheeb finally broke out, which is kind of nice to see. Holding over to this trend line now. Let's see. I guess the breakout didn't happen, but uh, that would have been a tough breakout to hold all the way through, right? That might have been one as well, but nah. So far, yeah, Sheeb's making a move right now. I'm, I'm, I am enjoying watching that happen as well. 
I wasn't I wasn't available to, I would I didn't see sheep last night so I didn't even notice it actually went up a little bit yesterday as well let's see and still trying to move up here it is getting closer and closer to all-time highs I guess the next resistance level you, can, you might be able to see here is around 3824 somewhere around there maybe a little bit less but she looks okay let me hop on over to the 15 minute for Sheeb. making moves Okay, I might have to breathe here in like the next few hours, but for now, it still looks like a good play. Right, yeah, both these charts look pretty sideways at the moment. Hey, Travis, happy to have you back, man. Hey, Ahmed, uh, let's see. Do you still think 60 will okay will hold, Mike? We could go down a little bit below, a couple thousand dollars below. We can go to, uh, because what we're looking at as far as here uh, for Bitcoin, go to the daily right here. See this little uh, little dip right here? That's what I'm using as my support. But when I look at this, um, what's an easy way to do this? Okay, I'm going to change this 20 chart right here. And I'm going to change this to the daily. So you can see what the daily 20 moving average is. No, no, the weekly 20 moving averages. No, that's Doge. No, yeah, the, the daily 20 moving averages on the four hour chart. That's what I was saying. Okay. Right here. Okay. So this is the 20 day moving average right here. But overall, this is a four hour chart. Okay. Right now, we're pretty close to this. I could see us falling down below this here pretty soon. So that's my ERP that I have with Bitcoin at the moment. That's why I haven't really bought back into most of my positions since I sold a little bit of, uh, well, most of it off here, right? I sold all my longs, but I took some swings out. Uh, I'm hoping that we're able to bounce off of this, hoping. But if we don't, well, first we're going to break down below the 20-day two, the two, moving average line. Then we're going to come down here uh, to this 58,768. Will you have an opportunity to buy? Probably once for a little bit of a, uh, a bounce play. Then from there, we might actually come down below that and head down towards here around fifty-three, fifty-four thousand dollars $54,000. I know. We'll, we'll see what happens though. But right now, I'm just wanting to see how we interact with this 20-day moving average here. Let's go to see this chart. There we go. I should bounce back up. Perfect. Hey Peter, got the Thinkorswim. Awesome that you uh, did a tutorial on it. Can't wait for more videos. Yeah, I'll be doing more videos on Thinkorswim as well. Um, I'm starting to get some more free time in my day, kind of. Um, and so what, I, what, what I'll be doing for you guys is I'll definitely be putting up more videos. Um, tomorrow I'm working on a Finviz video. I think I have I have a Finviz video coming out that goes over the generic stuff about like a little bit of everything about Finviz. But I'm also going to do a tutorial um, on Finviz and... Well, I tell you guys how to do set up the screener for the, the breakout preset, and then also how to use sectors to find plays, well, uh, to kind of uh, increase the odds of you picking a good play, so to speak, right? Um, I I did that for my last few plays I told you guys about. I put it on the shorts video, especially the EIX one, and that EIX that EIX one is doing pretty good so far. Oh, uh, there we go. Hey, Hota, happy to have you back, my man. Hey, well, can you look at AMC? Yeah, sure, I can take a quick peek at it. Uh, I don't know if it's been doing anything as of late. Down 7%. Yowza, what happened to this thing? Is it just because it's... No, we still have earnings a little bit later. So, I got rejected. I know that coming down a little bit more, that was pretty big for a gap down. I wonder if there was actually any news about it. Uh, let's see. AMC, yes, 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 yes. 20 bits of short for us, a higher than before. Lobbiton, Sukuro, pursuing arbitration for Robinhood trading locations. Ah, oh, that's interesting.
Oh, okay, so this is some bad news about the timing of the movies. Okay, that's not terrible. It should rebound here pretty soon. This trim line does not make any sense right here, but I wonder if that makes any trim lines here. Because this did just break down, I believe. I mean, if you go from here... No, I got close. What about this one right here? Monday might be a buying opportunity here, but uh, let's see. It hasn't been able to break out. It's still coming down a little bit. We got, we're still pretty far from the death cross on uh, MC. $36. If it breaks below this trend line, I might just buy a put on it or two and play it down to $28 or so, especially as earnings come through. I'm not entirely sure how bullish these earnings are going to be. The last earnings we had, it caused a, a gap up and came down for a little bit, then it just kind of kept on doing its own thing. So I don't think earnings are going to have a total, um, like a very, very large effect on what we see happen over the next few days. But I believe going into it, you're going to see people panic. You see there's a sell off here before earnings. Uh, not, not too much here. What about over here? A little bit of a sell off. So, yeah, it's bag, I guess you could say. I still think this is AMC short term is a little bit bearish, so that's just me though. I still think it'd be okay to be holding shares. I think I'd be very hesitant about buying options in this. Uh, you'll make money really fast or you'll lose money really fast. That's <laughs> that's how it's going to work out for AMC right now. Be wary of those earnings, though. Let's see, AMC's been getting some... Uh, Dogecoin's been getting some random volume in here lately as well. Hey, Brett. Hey, I'm on yes to tumble. That's what I think will happen too. Yeah, I'm hoping I'm wrong, but right now it looks like Bitcoin's gonna take a little bit of a fall over the next few days. Maybe I'll short it. I mean, I know, <laughs> I know you'll probably be shorting it. Hey, Jay, Micah, from traveling to Canada, will I be able to trade crypto on Voyager or Coinbase? Um, you know, I'm not entirely sure. It it, it goes from the signal from your phone about which way, what's which ones they're using. Uh, you know. <sighs> I'd probably say no, and that's just me being overly cautious because I, I don't really know. I would try to get NordVPN just for a month, like just for a month. I don't know how much it would cost uh, actually, but because if you get NordVPN, let's see, I'm an affiliate, but I don't care about the code. Um, let me just, so you can just look it up for yourself. Um, Pricing. Okay, there we go. Two-year plan, one-year work. Okay, so it'll cost you about a twelve dollars. Just do it once, and then, um, and I think that'd be okay. Don't worry about getting the two-year plan or the one-year plan. I think you'd probably be best for this. There may be other VPNs that are cheaper. Check the check whatever one you want out. I would probably just get uh, a VPN for once. Twelve dollars. It's like a two cups of coffee, I guess you could say. And then from there, I just know I'd be safe and I'd be able to trade whatever I want to. And I could stay uh, connected to whatever server I, I want to. But yeah, I would I would probably just sign up for this. Um, you don't have to use my affiliate link. I don't even think I have one anymore. Um, but yeah, I would probably just get this or another website or another VPN basically. And I think that would just alleviate all those fears because I'm not entirely sure. And at the same time, I would not want to be stuck in another country unable to access my crypto. So, um, you can also just wait till you're over there, download the app, like download the app, and then pay for it once you're up there. And then if, if you're not, not able to access it, so you can just have it on the back, you can just have it, um, I would say this, uh, you can just have it ready in case you do need it. And if you do need it, you just pay that 12 bucks, whatever, do, do whatever trades you need to do, and then you'll be fine for the month. Hey MDLF, good to see you man, uh, glad everything working now, have you heard of CBR token? I have not, friends were talking about it and it seems like a late buy in my opinion but also seems bullish, uh, CBR.
Is that it? Let's see. Let's see. Yeah, poke cover. Okay. You just swap. So, if they're really excited about this, you finally have a 200 day moving average. Basically, when you look at stuff like this and it's been going down and down and down, you can definitely take a small position. The reason I would take a small position here is if we're getting closer and closer to the 200 day moving average. When that happens, you're going to see an attempt to break out above it once, maybe twice. Once it breaks out above it, you're going to see a small run. I don't know how big that run's going to be, but it should be enough for you to make a little bit of profit on it. And you're buying near all time lows, it looks like as well, if from uh, how far away from all time, all time lows here. 63% away from all time lows. That's not too bad when you consider how much it's fallen. It's because uh, if it goes back up to all time highs, just as an example here, that'd be about 5,000% almost. So, yeah, I could see this uh, making you some money here. Small position, let that small amount of money turn into a lot of money basically for you. And putting it like this is a twenty or fifty dollar play. You can put way more than if you want to. I would be very safe with this one because you have no idea if it's actually going to break above this two hundred day moving average. But normally they like to push it, break above it, then like to have a small run, and then from there uh, you you scale out as needed. And as I'm looking at this, yeah, this two hundred is so new. It, it's the first time it's able. It's, it's actually been able to uh, have any impact on the price movement here. But yeah, you can definitely toss some money there. This doesn't seem anything wrong with it. And it doesn't seem like it's going down at the moment, so. It might just be going sideways until something actually happens. Let's see. Hey, yeah, RW Robinhood said they're not adding sheep. We, we will see. Could be a tactic. Yeah, who knows? Uh, I mean, they might just be accumulating it. But yeah, I. I don't. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't heard any buzz about Robinhood and sheep as of yet. I know Weeble has it though, so that's good enough for uh, most of you because I know most of you guys have both platforms. Hey, Jonathan. Oh, I'll turn down the music a little bit here. Oh, yeah, the music is up a little bit high. That's my bad. There we go, guys. Should be good now. There we go. Turn the music just a tad. Uh, let's see. Hey, Michael. A little tough to hear you through the volume. Okay, there we go. Let's see. Hey, D's. Robin Hood is an F in liar. If anything brings them more money, they will add it. <laughs> yeah, what do you call it? They, they do like their money. I'll tell you that. Hey, D's. Doge is too oversold. It should be fly, fly these days, but somehow uh, slowly climbing. Yeah, well, I think it's going to blow. I think not, not but I said blow. I think Doge is going to pass 30 cents by the end of uh, next week. I think we're I think we'll do for a little bit of a boom here. Dogecoin, let's see. This is what it looks like on the day chart. Let me make this full screen. There we go. Let me move this over here. Oh, yeah. So I'm treating it like I'm treating this night as a, as a Friday night. So cheers, everybody. This is um, tea. T. So, cheers. Ooh, not. That wasn't too bad. Uh. Okay. So we are breaking out right now. We broke out a few, a uh, couple days ago. Just yeah, okay, a few days ago here. Still on this overall trend. I'm fine with Doge for now. Weekly chart, however, we could definitely be looking for a little bit of, more of a move here. We have the 20 week moving average here. The 20, uh, 20 week moving average. I'm thinking that this week we're gonna try to blast above it again and try to hold this time. So that's what I'm hoping for short term. 30 cents is right up here. And let me go to, uh, what color do I want for this? Let's just go for green. And coordinates, let's just do 0.30. Okay, well, I just lost that one to $30. Okay, hold on. Three, zero, zero, okay. Why wouldn't it let me go type in the price? Um, 
Okay, well, I guess I'm not going to be able to get it. But yeah, so 30 cents is basically right up here. I'm hoping we can break that one there. Okay, 32. Okay, that's fine. All right, but yeah, I think I want to try to run into this level right here. We'll see what happens afterwards. But I'm pretty bullish on uh, Doge for next week. Uh, let me go back over here to the five, though. Actually, let me go to the 45 for Doge right now. Let me just see what's going on here. Four, okay. Yeah, this chart just needs to be squeezed down a little bit. Not much happening with Doge or Bitcoin at the moment, guys. Yeah, no worries, Jay. Happy to help you out. And uh, yeah, thanks, Jonathan, for letting me know. I appreciate that as well. Let's see. Hey, HF. Hey, Mike. Do you think Bitcoin will go back to 66K this coming week? Uh, not, not right now. I mean, maybe if we have a little bit of a sudden spike. What I could see happening right now is um, Bitcoin making a little bit of a move over the next few days. It might come back up to 63 or 64,000. Um, maybe a spike if whales can bring it up. But what I think is going to happen here short term, guys, is the 20 day moving average is going to get closer and closer. I think we're going to break down below that 20 day moving average and test this 58,768 level. Uh, if we're able to hold, awesome, we'll decide to bounce back up or we'll stick in this channel. If we end up coming back down, we may come back down somewhere to the level of about 55,000, 54,000 level, okay? So that's what I'm looking at short term. Um, you can kind of see this type of same type of pullback right here. That's what I'm thinking at the moment, something like that. Then we can continue this rally. But I think we do need to cool off a touch bit more before Bitcoin's able to uh, seduce more buyers into the market. Excuse me. Remember, every time Bitcoin reaches an all-time high, I think people are slowly learning, hey, maybe I shouldn't be buying it here. Maybe I should be buying it when it's a little bit lower, right? I think people are learning. Not everybody, I think, but I think some people are learning. Because I remember, um, remember, guys, I told you I, I, I went, I went, well, I didn't tell you, I, I went to a wedding sometime. Let me move this book out of the way. Uh... Do I have any pictures? Yeah, I went to my friend's wedding, this one. Um, and one what, what of my friends over there, Doug, um, he was asking me about Bitcoin. And he had bought it at uh, 54000 or something like that. And I think he, I think he bought somewhere up here, uh, 52000 something like that. And he was freaking out because Bitcoin was going down. And he, he was wanting to know what, I, what he should do right around here. And I told him I would just hold because we're really close to for a potential breakout and Bitcoin's gonna decide if it wants to go up even higher uh, right here. And so he held and it kind of you know blasted up ever since then. Uh, what, what was the point I was going with this? Um, but like now it's okay to be selling and you know protecting yourself a little bit here and I'm gonna I'm gonna wait to see if I, have, I can buy some more down at these levels down here. If it doesn't happen, I won't buy. If it does happen, I will definitely buy. That's the main gist of what I'm trying to say. But yeah, we did we did have this nice trend line up here, guys. It's easier to see on the four hour. Let me make this full screen here. There we go. And let me do this like a. There we go. Tap right down there. A little bit more. So I sold some of my coins right here on this breakdown. It came up a little bit. Came up a little bit, but what happened right after? took them down so for now you know i i think we're going to continue this little bit of a, a downtrend but uh who knows if i change this one more time over here to settings let's make this the daily so this is the 20 day moving average right here on the, the yeah 20 day moving average on a four hour chart we're looking okay but i can still see us coming down even more even though we had this slight breakout because a uh, slight little breakdown uh, not breakout uh, yeah, we broke out of this downtrend. Now we're going sideways, and you can kind of see that sideways movement right now. I'm gonna take this away actually now. Pretty soon we're gonna run into this 20-day moving average. From there, increased volatility is incoming. And let me put this back on the five here.
Hey, Roman. Mike, what's up, man? Just got back home playing uh, a gig in uh, North Carolina. Ooh, nice. Anything fun with crypto? Glad you got your internet back. Uh, well, you just heard my spiel about what I think about Bitcoin. Um, nothing really fun, too fun going on. My, my dog's is here sleeping next to me. Um, he's he's all puckered out. Uh, uh, I played with him outside for a little bit uh, today, and uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of beat. <laughs> I, went, I went hunting today, too, so I've, I've just been kind of doing a whole bunch of stuff. But yeah, I'm really happy I got my internet back. For those of you guys who don't know, I was not able to make the stream last night, which is why I'm streaming tonight, because I lost my Wi-Fi. Uh, I was talking to my mom. She lost her cable, so Xfinity lost everything. And then, uh, you know, I go through AT&T, and I just have uh, the, the newest iPhone Pro Max. I don't know what number it is now. I don't keep track of it. Uh, I just like the cameras, but I lost all of my, all of my internet. Like, so I, I could barely do anything on my phone. I had like the tiniest amount of internet. I took a screenshot actually of what it was. Um, what was it? It was 1.34, uh, megabytes per second. I think, uh, that's what I had last night. Zero upload speed. So I was unable to do anything last night. And then I, I, yeah, I, I was so screwed. But uh, today I was able to get everything back. Today it was it was not a fun day yesterday because I was panicking because I had no way to really reach you guys. Ghost uh, contacted me, contacted me through Discord, and I was able to talk to her through Discord. But I had to like wait like two minutes to connect, so I was always connecting to Discord. Got a message through it, barely sent, and then I had to wait like I don't know a few minutes for a Ghost message to get back to me. It was just not a fun <laughs> fun night last night. I ended up just drinking. Let's see. Hey June, is it feasible for SLP to uh, ambush some fronts? I don't actually know what you mean by that, but I can take a look at SLP and see what it what's going on with it. So this broke down out of this upward trend here. Looks like we looked at it before. The 50-day moving average has been holding it down for the last little bit. This looks pretty weak at the moment, like it wants to take another leg down here, possibly down to 0 0.061. So that might be a drop of about 6-7% more. But it looks like over the next few days, or possibly like a, a week or two, it does look like it wants to have a little bit of rebound here, especially as the 50-day moving average is screaming down here, like pretty darn fast. But uh, I, I'd be careful with this one right here. This one, uh, well, it's fairly new. I don't see any of the moving averages here. Yeah. Is there, hold on, let me, is there SLP for KuCoin? No, SLP, USD. Do I have a 200 daily moving average here? I do not. What are the other ones? Timex? No, no, okay. So yeah, I'd say right now, just, you can trade it. Small position, don't put any more than a small position because it is currently on the breakdown. It looks pretty heavy at the moment, like it wants to take this move, like, I can get a brush working here. Like it wants to come down here and then possibly by the time this line comes down here and this line comes down here it'll first try to break out here wave around and then possibly try to make a big breakout like that um but so you know you have some time before you really need to be looking to buying this at the moment if you already bought something you're just holding you can still hold and that's good that would still be an okay play your stop loss right now is going to be around 0 0.0542 which is a pretty uh, forgiving stop loss though so that might be a little too extreme for you uh, let me get all these blue lines off before they all look like 50 day moving averages here there we go Hey, Jonathan Lugo. It's only one Jonathan in this town. Oh, geez. Yeah, there's a, there's a few Jonathans in here. CRV currency trading around the three, not CVR. Yeah. Let's see. Oh, CVR. Let me see. CVR. Oh, the Chicago River and Machine. Is this what you're talking about? Let me see. I was curious about CVR. So I do not know the difference between those two tickers, but here's CVR. Don't know if this. Oh well, yeah, you don't want to trade this at all. This is this is uh, 
This does not have enough volume to make it this attractive at all. Um, be careful with the Chicago River one if that's what you, you were talking about. Uh, let's see. Back to five. Poof, there you go. Hey, Patrick, do you know what happened yesterday with your internet? Uh, I do not. Uh, right now, I, I have no idea exactly what happened. Um, I I uh, I went through Twitter. See, massive cro cox outage caused by voltage issues at BR facility. Uh, this is Louisiana, but I, I don't have Cox. Uh, yeah, I don't have this this company here. Um, this is Bat right, Baton Rouge. Uh, Xfinity is what I had, and so you see, last night there's a whole bunch of a uh, whole bunch of reports last night, and total blackout. Yeah, so there's total blackout. Maybe um, Twitter. Outage, latest. Let's see. Widespread outage in LA. Amtrak. Oh, geez, I don't know what the heck was going on. I don't know. This is this wouldn't have been my stuff. This would have been something. This is like this is too recent. Uh, yeah, I have no idea. But yeah, guys, I have no idea why my power is out. I'm gonna think it's a. I'm, I'm gonna go with the, the theory that it's a, it's a cyber attack. But yeah, I have no evidence to back that up. It was not something I was excited about at all. Because you know, normally if we have an outage, guys, it's like one thing. So I'll lose my Wi-Fi from Xfinity. Xfinity, I have problems with them all the time. Uh, n never do I have like a problem with Xfinity and then also AT&T and then also one of my friends having a problem with Verizon and then also one of my friends in Louisiana that one you just saw right there having a problem with their internet and also I had some friends in Philadelphia who had trouble with their internet internet so I, I just have no idea what was actually going on there um, yeah it was not it was not a good experience but you know there was lots of people i bet a lot of you guys had all of your internet and um you know cable and wi-fi working yesterday and then there was like people like me that were just like what the heck is going on i need technology i had no way to actually like trade at all as yesterday if bitcoin decided to take a a, um, a massive crash down to twenty thousand, i would have no way to actually like, trade right uh, so i was just like what do i gotta what do i, I should do something here See. Hey, why Shiba's okay? You should have already bought it when it was resting down below, though. Right now, you're kind of chasing it a little bit too much. Hey, Melvin. Uh, for Shiba, are you like an actual price? Here's Shiba in the five minute. Uh, well, you don't want to put all that money down at once. You want to start doing small positions here, small, small, small moves. Because what could happen there is you could actually just have a double top on this resistance and it can come all the way back down. So take small positions over the next few days, like a little bit here, a little bit here, a little bit here, a little bit here. If it goes down, uh, that, that's awesome. That means you're going to get more sheep here. Um, and I would have a stop loss of maybe right here at point uh, two six nine four. But right now, I mean, this is a really dangerous spot to be buying. So um, just be careful of that. But I, if you do want to buy in there still... Excuse me. Small position, small position. Every single day, add to that position, and then as long as it's making you money, go uh, good, uh, good for you. If you continue losing money, you can still add those positions, but just make sure you have a stop loss there to protect you in case it does go down a little bit further, because you do not want to become a bag holder on Sheeb. Um, you know, there are tons of people that bought Sheeb way over here that had to deal with all this crap. You don't want to deal with anything like that. Even if it doesn't come all the way back down here, it could easily just come back down here or here over the next few weeks. There we go. There we go. Uh, 
Hey, x -Bolt, she would never hit one sin. Oh, yeah, definitely. I don't think it's going to hit one sin ever. Uh, let's see. Unless the whole world decides to buy it. <laughs> hey, more got hunting for rabbits. <laughs> ah, I could actually use some rabbits too. That'd actually be really good. SLP is the coin of excess infinity. Ooh, that sounds interesting. Hey, Nathan Uprising. Oh, sup, man. Hope you're doing well. Oh, you have an orange one. Oh, yeah, we're getting into the, the next, the next, the next month here. Hey, Monica. Hey, Mike. Do you think Ethereum will continue to go up all to all time highs despite the possible drop in Bitcoin? Um, no, like, so if Bitcoin does take this little bit of a tumble down to like 55, 54,000, Ethereum is going to take a tumble down too, but it will come back up uh, during the altcoin run to go above 5,000. So I'm still holding my Ethereum, even though it might take a dip. Let's see. Hey, you're watching. You got <laughs> impede. You're probably just the government testing, Mark. Oh my god, see, I'm the type of guy that would believe in stuff like that. Although not at MP, because all my electronics were still working. It's just I got to my computer, and you guys see how I have this dashboard like this? So all this looks exactly the same. And I was going to say, hey guys, I don't know what's going on. I try to message you guys and say, like, hey guys, blah, blah, blah. And then I try to hit enter, and nothing was working. So it wasn't going through, so I had no idea what was going on. Um... But yeah, so I, I, had, I had absolutely no idea what was going on last night. It was freaking me out. Hey, Morgoth, Litecoin is at 199. Yeah, Litecoin's been pretty interesting lately. It was above 200. I think it's at 198 right now. I'll pretty much, yeah, 199. It did break above. It came back down, though, since Bitcoin took a little bit of a dump. Hey, Little Scratcher, you can go to your local McDonald's to use free Wi-Fi. I don't even know if the free, wi free Wi-Fi was working. But I don't care about it as, as a point of like just talking to people. Like I would have to literally bring in like a $3,000 computer to McDonald's with like $1,000 monitors equipment. And I'm just like, no, nah, no, nah, I'm okay. I, I can just relax. But I, I don't actually think uh, McDonald's actually had internet as well. Because if, um, yeah, I, I don't think they would have had it either. Because I, I'm betting they would have went through one of the major service providers and they were all out around here. I do live next to a military base. Maybe the military was cooking up something funny. Let's see. Hey, NK Cody. Uh, I don't know what, if that's a coin or uh, what do you call it? Let me see. Wow, it's on three and a half. That's not as much fun. Okay, so it's pumped back up quite a bit. Looks okay. Had a false breakout, it looks like. Actually, let me go to trading view here. Short term, this doesn't look too good. It looks like it's a little bearish, especially since Bitcoin looks bearish at the moment. You can see it actually had a breakout here, but since Bitcoin took a tumble, it, you saw how it actually tried to build up and actually have make a move here. But since Bitcoin took a tumble, it actually drug, it dragged this thing back down. Right now, it looks like a pretty, it looks like someone wants to have a red day, probably continue down in words here. All right, so we can push this down now. Over the next few days, this is probably going to come down to like 47, 48 cents. So, you know, it could be good for a short. I had to wait a little bit longer before entering a position here. Just because uh, I think Bitcoin is actually bearish right now. So I wouldn't really be buying too much of these other coins. Unless you think it's actually going to separate off from Bitcoin over the next few days. And it's going to pop while Bitcoin's going down. If that, you know, makes sense. Hey, e Trev, I appreciate it, man. Thank you very much.
Hey, you're watching. Oh, yeah. If you guys can, please consider liking the stream. Every single like helps, guys. Every single like helps. It's as easy as going here, clicking the video that's not here, popping up, and then hitting like. If you guys hit like, I would appreciate it a lot, everybody. A lot. Let's see. Let everybody know. There we go. There we go. Perfect. And there we go. Okay. Hey, W. So, how high do you think sheep can go to? Uh, maybe another. Maybe another 30 to 50% more short term, I guess you could say. Uh, where it goes from there, I absolutely have no idea. Like, I have some sheep. I'm going to let it. I'm, I'm going to sell some of it off over the next, like, few months. And then I'm going to leave, like, 10% of my sheep in there just to see what happens. But I am not, like. I'm not the type of guy that would feel comfortable leaving like money in sheep for such a long time because I think once that the, 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 the FOMO dies out so to speak I'll have another opportunity to buy it back look what happened last time sheep was at um, you know during uh, in its like bull run during the altcoin season market okay so it started off it was doing really really good hyper big boom 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 what happened then it crashed and then Bitcoin decided to take decided to take take off around here and it did absolutely nothing. So I think the next time we make a big move down, we might not come all the way back down here, maybe just over here or over here on, on a big crash. When that happens, I believe I'll be able to buy in at another low price and I'll have plenty of time to do so. This, uh, I remember guys, Shiba was just doing nothing for a long time and we had talked about, hey, if you wanted to, if you wanted to, uh, if you wanted to buy this, all you had to do was wait for the breakout. And of course the, bro the breakout happened at like a crazy time, but you could have bought way down here and at this moment in time if you would have just bought not down here where we, like i bought if you would have just bought right here at the breakout which is the more sensible thing because your money wouldn't have been tied up in sheep for like my money was tied up in sheep okay it was only 200 dollars, so it wasn't like it was tied up tied up but i had i had money in sheep for 101 days before it did anything before it did anything interesting yep so if you guys wanted to just do a little bit of day trade on that, you could have bought right here on the breakout from the channel. And then if we would have just held this time, you'd be up about 241%. So, you know, it's, it's not a bad, it's not a bad play. But uh, as far as where it goes now, uh, it's pumping up higher. We'll see what happens. Right now I'm using this, let me zoom in here, this daily high of 3294 as my level of resistance short term if we're able to break above that that might be another opportunity to buy i wouldn't buy necessarily on the first breakout because it'll probably end up getting whacked back down it'll break out get whacked back down then that's where you want to buy um because remember yesterday we were uh last week we were all talking about how um you know wait for it to cool down and you you, you guys could be looking okay for buying some sheep i sold some sheep um like right around here and I bought back the same sheep right around here. So it wasn't too much of a problem, but like too big of a deal. But I did get like technically millions more sheep just spreading that difference there. Um, but yeah, now it's going up a little bit more. We'll, we'll see how it works out. It is bouncing off the 20 day moving average, which is actually pretty nice to see. I'm hoping that Bitcoin can do something like that when it, um, but you know, we'll have to wait and see. Should people be investing on DWEX stock since the hottest stock of the week? I personally would not. Uh, that's just me. Um, I have already talked to a few of you guys in my comments, and some of you guys have already lost money playing around with it. Uh, if you guys want to play with it, I mean, go for it. The, when, when I see stocks like this, I treat them as casinos. That's how I treat them. Casinos, casinos, casinos. I love to lose money in casinos. I like to play, you know, play around in casinos. I like to make money. But I know at the end of the day, this is totally, um, you know, this is a crazy thing to try to hop on into. And here's the five minute chart. You know, 
if you are going to buy it, don't be the guy that buys it up here. Be the guy that buys it off of a major dip. Uh, usually, let's see, you're gonna have to time it with probably a halt because I'm sure this thing got halted a few times. Yeah, this, yeah, it definitely got halted a few times. So be very careful with, that's what I'm gonna say. This is a gambling play here. This is something that you're just having fun with. I wouldn't put serious amounts of money in here because you could lose all that money very, very fast. Here's the four hour chart. It was all green until the last four hours uh, Friday afternoon. You know, I might come back down here to 60 or $40, then uh, probably not, probably in the mid 50s, then it'll try to rip up again. Probably what's gonna try to, what's gonna happen, but uh, you know, this this is just a high risk one. Personally, I don't think it's worth like new investors risking their money on plays like this, but if you go into their understanding that, hey, I probably have a higher chance of losing money than making money, but I wanna have some fun and practice trading a very volatile stock, then yeah, go for it. Uh, you know, five minute chart here. You gotta wake up and be there right at the uh, beginning of the um, the market day. Preferably, I'd say the best thing you guys can do for this one is try to trade a little bit here in pre-market and uh, post-market hours. I think you have much better opportunity. I probably would have tried to take a little bit of a nibble during uh, post-market or after hours on Friday, personally, if I was getting in here. Now I'd wait for pre-market uh, Monday morning for, what, for me, which is at 1 a.m., so I'm not gonna actually be up that early. And then I would try to take a small position there, or I'd have a small limit order that would trigger if it gets down to $70 or something like that. But not really, mm, yeah. Unless you're just trying to have some fun. I did not buy DWAC. No, no, I didn't. I didn't buy that. Hey, you're watching how's your mom, Mike? Are feeling better? Uh, she's feeling a little bit better. Uh, she, well, no, she is doing better. She was able to drive to dialysis today. I didn't have to actually have to drive her to dialysis. So, um, yeah, she's doing good. I had to replace the. Um, I had to replace her brake pedal pad thing today. You know how like if you guys have a brake pedal, there's like a little rubber part on top of it that has the grip, so you push it down and it doesn't slip and slide. I had to replace that for her today. Um, so she was able to drive and. She, um, she was happy. So, yeah, she was fine. Hey, Etro, we really appreciate you, Mike. Thanks for all of the info analysis you do for all of us. I have learned so much and have really been enjoying watching your videos and investing. Hey, I appreciate it. And, guys, yeah, pretty soon I, I am getting more serious about this tutorial stuff. Or, I guess I keep on saying more serious. But, basically, I have more time on my hands, which means I have more time to make videos. I am going to be doing these short lesson plans here. Like, this, this first lesson only goes, it's like a one-page type of thing. I go through some charting basics. I walk you through some simple stuff. And then uh, this is probably gonna be like a two to three minute video. I'm gonna try to make these bite size so you guys can watch them throughout like your work day or whenever you guys have a, like a few minutes. And then from there, um, you know, I'll have a, a short diagram where I'm like, hey, here's a candlestick chart. I'll show you this chart right here, right? And then uh, let me go to the daily. And then I'll be like, uh, you know, here, here's a bar chart. And I'll explain what the, the you know, the, the, the benefits of that is uh, or area chart I don't like that one that's the yeah, baseline here's area chart there we go why do I have a baseline chart out here area there we go and then the last one it's gonna be is gonna be a line chart here line and area pretty much the same thing area just kind of shows you the drasticness of how what the like how the moves been occurring especially if you zoom out like if you zoom out here from Bitcoin and put it on the area chart you can see how you know how fast Bitcoin's gone up in this amount of time, and it kind of looks like a mountain. Now it looks like we could be taking a little bit of a tumble, then coming back up here. Actually, right here, if you look at it like this, kind of, kind of looks like a baby head and shoulders right here. But yeah, but if you look at the candles, you're gonna see something different. So I'll show you guys all the differences of what each one is used for, and what I, what I like since I started using Adobe Premiere over the last few weeks, I will also be able to show you guys some of those uh, those cool features where I have overlays with little notes and stuff so if you guys want to take notes off the videos you can also take notes as well hey bro maybe there's some standard equipment that all these companies are updating it now I don't know if I was those companies I'd wait till that, that infrastructure bill got <laughs> got passed but I mean it could be something I, I have no idea what it was um,
I guess I technically live closest to Tacoma, Washington. News? There's not even any news stories about it. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, uh, recent, last 24 hours. No. No. How is Alec Baldwin related to Internet Out? Okay, yeah. Okay. Whatever, I have no idea what happened. But uh, hopefully it just doesn't happen again. That's the main thing. I just don't want it to happen again. Hey, Lil Rose Coacher. If you want to get into fun uh, stock, you can. I don't trade penny stocks like that to tr to make money like that. So I, d I don't actually just like, I don't do that type of stuff. If you want me to do some technical analysis on it, I can. They're, like, they're too high risk. Like, I really don't recommend them for like a new traders because uh, what it's up for... It's up 471%. This is pure FOMO buy. This is a pure FOMO buy. Um, you could look to buy it on Monday morning if you want to. You're probably going to let it ride for a few days and see where it goes. It's something like I put, I'm going to throw $50 into this. Whatever it ends up going to a few days from there, uh, a few days uh, afterwards, that's what I'll do. Like, um, here, hold on. Let me go to Robinhood. I have like, how much money do I have in my Robinhood account? $34. Okay. I will sell. Oh, what did I do that for? Oh, gosh darn it. Okay, hold on. How do I do this? Oh, there we go. Okay. Robin has gone through a lot of updates since I actually used it. Okay. Now, what is this stock? Fun. Funware. Elevator volatility. Can I go fractional? Okay. I will buy ten dollars worth of fun. Buying dollars. Or do I get limit order or what do you call? Oh, well, we'll see. So I'll buy some Monday morning. I'll just let it ride for a few days. Since it's not options, I'm not really too worried about it here. Um, but yeah, I, I'd be I'd be very careful of it. Let's see, they have finally figured it out that Bitcoin is uh, maintaining compound growth in USD around 200% year over the years. Hey, that's that's much better than what gold's been doing. <laughs> I tell you that. For I don't know why so many people try to relate Bitcoin to gold, but I think Bitcoin is so much better. Bitcoin's the new world type of stuff. I did not short DWAC. I don't I don't trade anything that volatile. That's not um, how I became a consistent trader is by staying away from that type of stuff. Uh, you know, that's where like I said, that's where I go to. That's a casino to me. I don't usually try to trade that stuff too much. Normally, when I trade, I go for stuff that's tried and true. Apple calls, uh, Microsoft calls, Tesla calls, stuff like that. Make a lot more money over a long period of time doing that than trying to gamble in the markets with a with a Trump stock. Um, you know, uh, yeah. Oh, no, 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 that's not a Trump stock. It's nothing to do with Trump. But it's more like the penny stocks and those volatility type stuff. I stay away from them. Plus, and when I talk about them normally, people tend to try to hop on them, especially new traders, and they end up losing. They end up losing a lot of money at, at the same time too. Hey, Justin Solarflows or something? Heard about them coming about a week ago. Oh, that could be actually, that's a good theory right there, Justin. Yeah, I mean, I'm willing to accept anything here, guys. I just have no idea what happened, but a solar flare, that is actually, that is pretty darn interesting. I have to look for NASA. Hey, Rob, hey, Mike, do, uh, do you, uh, you, what do you think about Bitcoin Twin since Bitcoin Chains coming out this Friday? I'm pretty excited for it. So I'm still holding my Bitcoin at the moment. Bitcoin has been pretty consistent with Bitcoin, the price movement here. Looks like actually, well, this is five minutes. This is 15 here. Hold on. Yeah. Looks like BitTorrent's doing a little bit more volatility at the moment, but it's only up about, it's only up a little bit here. But for the most part, BitTorrent likes to follow Bitcoin. I'm hoping we can get a little bit of a boost on Friday because of that, though. Whether it happens or not, we'll have to see. Mostly, I just wanted to continue holding up this trend line here. Maybe if we're lucky and if Bitcoin hasn't taken a little bit of a tumble, we'll be able to break above the 20-day moving average and the 50 and try to come back up here towards 0 0.0042 for a nice... 
10, 12% increase I could see. Only thing is, we're most likely going to come back down here to 0 0.0034, just because I think Bitcoin's going to take a little bit of a tumble here. Hopefully I'm wrong, hopefully whales can kind of save us, but just from the technical analysis, that 20 day moving average on Bitcoin is not going to be the most helpful to us. But long term, still happy with BitTorrent. And you can actually see here on BitTorrent, oop, another breakout opportunity here pretty soon as well. So I'll be waiting for that one too. Pop, there we are. But I'm excited that they're actually turning out some news right now, especially right before all COVID season is expected to start in the next few, uh, like a month or so. Hey, Martin Smith, stop investing emotionally. Invest for a long call. Invest because you know you're investing. Into, you're, the, oh, the thing you're investing in is amazing. Exactly. Uh, that's how I treat my long-term positions. Uh, Short-term, it's always about options and whatnot, but I love trading options. Um, this Friday, I ended up with a mixed bag, though. Uh, what, what was my trading position? Uh, how can we help you? Oh, oops. I know I have a screenshot play I think this is right here yeah so currently three of my options are down uh, four of them are up I'm down well I guess total $875 on cone $275 on AYX $1,400 on Redfin I'm up $450 on CBS I'm up $1,600 on Duke I'm up $1,600 on AEE and I'm up uh, $2,125 on EIX I loaded you guys to EIX though the other day on a, a YouTube short, I think they're called. Uh, and so you can see right here, down 11%, down 29%, down 26%, up 5%, uh, up 46%, up 37%, and up 28%. So mixed bag. Overall, I was, I'm up like, I was up like $1,900 on a Friday. So I wish it could have been better. I, the one mistake I did make here, AYX, I'm okay with losing money on that one. Cone, sure. Cone actually broke out, like, think of my, look at my mouse, went up, broke, it still broke out and it came back down a little bit. It's still above that trend line though, so it's still breaking out here. So I'm gonna give it some time, especially since none of these expire until October, November 19th, except for the CBS ones. Uh, this is much more shorter term play here because I think it has earnings coming up from soon. But anyway, um, what was I gonna say here? Redfin I bought too early, that was my mistake. I'm holding on to them because I wanna see if they go anywhere. Uh, I totally just wouldn't call, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna let them kinda go. And you can see, what, it's at 26%. That means you multiply that by uh, four, and that should be how much money I invested into, like, what, $6,000? So I'll see how it works out. And again, November 19th, so I have lots of time before it goes down like 80, 90 something percent. <laughs> hey, Brett. Hey, Laura Scratcher. YouTubers also FOMO pumping DWAC and fun stock. People go stream on YouTube promoting the stock or grow growing up. It's like the stock of the day to FOMO. Yeah, I, I just don't like buying FOMOs. Like, there's a whole bunch of YouTubers. They all have their styles. I don't like to go into very volatile stocks like that. It's just not something I enjoy. Like, for me, it would, it would, be, it would be a lot easier for me to trade. But when I think about, like... Uh, the people that watch my stream and how there's a lot of new traders who are just like brand spanking new or they've been trading for less than a month or a few months if i introduce them to that chances are that the majority of people that trade that are going to lose money because they have no idea how to trade something that volatile and then when you flip on top of that most of you guys don't have twenty five thousand dollars a year this is kind of what goes through my mind i'm uh twenty five thousand dollars in your account sorry uh what I, what I think is like, wow, these guys may panic and waste all of their day trades. And what's happened before is uh, when, I, when I've talked about these types of stocks is, well, not me, but I've seen on like discords or whatnot. People freak out so much that they execute their fourth day trade in a rolling five-day period. And then they lose the ability to day trade on that platform for like 90 days, I think it is. And so, you know, it's just, you can trade it. There's nothing wrong with trading it. Personally, I just don't do any of those types of plays. It just, it, it's kind of a safety net to protect people. Um, and the good thing is, if you guys want to trade that stuff, there's YouTubers 
live in the morning that will be day trading that stuff with you. So if you wanted to try one of those guys out and see if they're making money or not, you can try to copy them exactly. Uh, but I don't recommend going off and playing with those stocks alone because if you guys, well, if you guys are new, you know, you guys will lose money and it will not be the, the, the most fun experience to lose a bunch of money on a play that you probably know was a very advanced uh, type of, you know, trading that was needed in order to like make a lot of money off of that short amount of time. Because, you know, I don't use like the VWAP and all, all those types of like day, day trading type of things on my charts. I use mostly, uh, you know, swing trading uh, technicals instead of those day trading technicals like the um, different moving averages, uh, you know, the VWAP, Boilinger bands, I have them on sometimes, but you know, that type of stuff. It's just, eh, eh. Yeah, <laughs> something like that, right? But the good thing is, guys, there are YouTubers out there that talk about that stuff quite a bit. So if you guys want that, those daily stocks that are pumping, or what I call them the Finviz, like top screens, like stuff so I go to Finviz right here. Every morning, you can check this. Um, I have a link down below. Finviz is 100% free, by the way, guys. They have a paid plan, but I don't pay for the play, paid plan. But you guys will see the stuff up here. Anything that's really popping, you'll see it here uh, in the mornings. Fun, Mark, DWAC, SGBX. SGBX is always doing something here. Uh, CRTD, PTLO, whatever. You'll see a lot of these plays right around here, and then you can also play around with them. You can see the biggest losers as well. Like uh, that bio biotech always going down, HX, stuff like that. So you have ample opportunity to trade anything that you feel is very volatile. Even Snapchat. Snapchat it kept on going down. Uh, I'm probably going to buy some Snapchat in my retirement account here pretty soon. I think it's going to go fine overall. But uh, yeah, that is whoosh. Snapchat got hit hard. And then uh, Facebook also. Who's it? Yeah, yeah, was it? Yeah, Facebook. Yeah, ouch. Um, and it was just trying to break out too. Uh, uh, kind of. Oh, and it was like more. Okay. So Facebook's, yeah, Facebook's going to go through a whole bunch of crap for a while. Doesn't mean it's not worth buying. Just like Baba. Baba was worth buying when it was going to zero almost. Let me see. Hey, Peter. Oh, I'll, I'll fix it for you, my man. Thanks for letting me know. Uh, let me go here. Let me do it so every five minutes. Um, oh, not 85 minutes. Every five minutes I'm going to have this Doge to refresh. For now, I'm gonna refresh like that. Everything else working okay. Let's see. Make sure all the other tickers are working. Ethereum Classic. Oh, okay, that one just moved. Bitcoin SV. I don't see that one. Bitcoin Cash. Okay. And let's go to five minutes here. And Bitcoin Cash here. And we refresh that one when it goes to five minutes as well. There we go. All right, perfect. All right. Cheers, everybody. Ooh. Oof. Mm -hmm. That's fine for now. Hey, Alina. Crypto trading might make you rich if you're a hedge fund with deep pockets and an unusual skilled currency trader. After successful investments, let's see. I believe Solana will hit five hundred six dollars in the next couple months. I could definitely see that happening, Justin. I could definitely see that happening during the uh, altcoin season. Definitely. Let's see. Hey, Justin, I appreciate it, guys. Oh yeah, please, guys. If you guys can, please consider liking the channel. Let's see. Let's see. Hey, Bruno, Do Shiba to the moon, a. Eh? I'm rooting for both of them at the moment because I have money in both of them, <laughs> both of them at the moment. So usually anything like anything like that, I really do enjoy. Enjoy. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, Bruno, you got to be careful. Don't spread fud. Don't spread fud, Bruno. Let's see. Hey, Trisha. Now, due to ignorance, is just because of the high rate of unprofessional brokers in the business. Yeah, that's definitely part of it. Um, you always, you know, the, the market is a uh, the market is necessarily not for beginners. Which is why you got to really be prepared about how how much money you're gonna lose before you get everything right, and while I recommend doing a little bit of paper trading every now and again, that's why when I talk to you guys, I uh, when I recommend Bidget, and I have my link down below, Bidget has a demo account, which basically means paper trading, and then when I recommend um, what is that Thinkorswim down here, 
paper trading as well. So you guys have the ability to trade with fake money before you guys put your real money on the line, which I think is much better. Like, much, much better. Uh, let's see what's going on here. Hey, bro, is Shiba's back up to 3,600? Let me see right here. Yeah, Shiba is actually still making a move right here. We can watch Shiba here for a few minutes. This is Shiba on the 15-minute chart. It got got some volume. It's moving up here. It looks pretty nice. Make a move. Hey, doggo. What you doing? You okay? You tired? Well, we'll go outside in a little bit. Let's see. James, wow, I'm just shocked you mentioned Robert. Let's see. I'm moving to this Robert Farrington. Okay, that, that's a spammer, guys. Be careful of these spammers. I don't know why they try to spam here. Okay. Uh, what are you guys talking about here? Hey, Brett. Oh, sorry. Hey, James. Wow, I'm shocked you mentioned... Uh, oh, jeez. Didn't I just block him? Oh, there it goes. Okay, sorry. Hey, Brett. <laughs> no, it was Brett. It's a casino gamble, like Mike said, but uh, PBTS has... Uh, Provided technology for mining, and I will start to see their gains if they go up. Ooh, that's pretty nice, though. Hey, is that if they if they got something back and it up, don't be afraid to buy it. Usually, um, yeah, most most things I buy for long term holds, though. So I think it's still a good play, though. Or right, wait, uh, PBTS. Oh, talking about PBTS. Yeah, if you can follow the technology, Brett, uh, that's different. So you're talking more about the fundamentals of what's what's going on behind the company. Excuse me. Which is much different than just buying and playing the stock right because um and plus it's still at a cheap price everything else is already pumped up quite a bit so right now you're going to be buying at those fomo levels all right let me take a quick peek here what's bitcoin doing i mean bitcoin's not really doing anything is there anything else to look at now no what's going down so far the only thing i can actually see going down the last few hours is link what happened to link not too much let's go to the daily Oh, just found its peak for the day. That's all. Okay, or peak for the week. That's not bad. I can move right there. There we go. I'm hoping Chief can keep on pumping though. It looks like it's uh, it looks pretty bullish. Anything else? Let me see. Take a quick peek over here, very fast, guys. See some movement up there, that's fine. Highest volumes, okay. Biggest movers, yeah, Sheeb. Oh, CRV is moving, Vite is moving. Oh, I think CRV was probably somebody was asking me about before. Link, Matic, Cocos, okay. Anything else here? Regulation, oh, that's good, that's good, that's not America. Anything else here that I need to look at? Actually, I've never used this Trader's AI before. Yeah, bearish, bearish, bearish. Hedging. Uh... Okay, that's fine. There we go. Hey, Olivia. See, oh, I'm getting attacked by spammers who are trying to talk about a, a guru. I don't know why people talk like that. Like, why would you do that? Hey, Brutus, I'm, I'm I'm currently up seven hundred eighty-eight dollars in cheap. Hey, congrats, man. That's really freaking nice. Really freaking nice right there. Hey, Luis, these spammers. Uh, I uh, I know, guys. There, there's so many weird spammers. They're getting more and more sophisticated, though. I've been trying to ask YouTube what they're doing about them, and like they had they put out a video about it, but they, they I have not seen any change in the level of spam. I think the spammers are getting better and better, and YouTube is not keeping up with the amount of spam that attacks these types of channels. Hey, R said, do you think listing Sheeb on? HOD, uh, don't know what that is. Well, affect the Doge price. Um, if you talk, if you're talking about an exchange, not really. I think Dogecoin is doing its own thing. The one thing I'll say is there is money that could be in Dogecoin now that's currently in Sheep, but I think most people are just going to be day trading. So I think all the day traders right now are hopping around and playing with Sheep, which is a good idea if you're a day trader, right? And then uh, there's a lot of people still holding Dogecoin, waiting for a pump up. But uh, these guys, once Sheep is kind of cooling off again. Then I think it'll work out good for Dogecoin as they, they try to push it up as well. But 
I don't think Sheep going on there will have too much of an impact on the Doge price itself. Let's see. Hey, RMS. What do you think of Bitcoin? I think we're going to go down in the next few days, personally. Uh, it looks like we might come back down below the 20 day moving average. So if we take a quick peek at here at Bitcoin, let's go to the daily. See this green line here is the 20 day moving average. I think over the next few days, we're going to take a little bit of a leg down and come back down here towards. Let's see, uh, under 60,000 basically. Hopefully we're able to bounce above the 20 moving average because this is a level of support technically. Uh, just the way, since we did break through these all-time highs, I'm thinking we're, we're gonna need to breathe a little bit more. And I think there's gonna be, need to be a little bit of panic because usually after we make these good moves, we're always, we're always panicking and panicking and panicking. And then people buy at these levels down here and then we go even higher. Everybody's like, when should I buy? Or when we've already had a good opportunity to buy down here. So short term, I think I'm, I'm bearish on Bitcoin short term. Uh, but uh, you know, medium term, after we take that little bit of a hit, I think we're going to be just fine. Let's see. Hey, Little Rose Scratcher. You, you only have 50 bucks budget for one year to play these risky investments for stock day. What do you think? I mean, it, it's really up to you. It's really up to you how you want to trade it. I tend to only gamble and think of them as really fun games. So, like, I don't actually, like, put any of my portfolio really into these types of things. Uh, like fun or DWAC, what I normally do is I think like, this is the way my mind processes it. Hey, I wanna go to the casino tonight. Well, do I wanna drive and with COVID right now and go to a really packed Native American casino, which is really fun, really fun casinos. Or do I wanna just take like my normal $200, $300 that I would have already just, would have, that, would have, that I would have spent at the casino and just put it on DWAP for a day and see what happens. That's what, that's the thought process. I don't expect any of the money back when I put those volatile plays. And so, like, I can't, like, recommend, like, p regular traders that are new, like, you know, play those type of uh, plays as well. It's just very risky for them, and most traders don't know how to do it. And so, it was just, you know, I, it's not something I would ever really recommend, but you guys are your own traders. You guys are all grown-ups, right? You guys have to be in order to be in the market. So, definitely, if you guys want to play with them, like, go for it. Let's see. Uh... Only let your subscribers chat for only one minute. Oh, I don't care about that. They're not they're not spamming really fast They're actually trying to have a, a conversation um, But yeah, no, it's fine Hey, Smith really how does this whole trip thing work? I have been on the trading stuff and watching the videos, but confused about the whole process this Robert broker Oh my gosh, this is freaking hilarious <laughs> Hey, you're watching I spammers at least hit the like button at least for real It is interesting. I mean it is really interesting like I, I'm pretty sure there's some guy in a room like copying pasting all the stuff in here But I don't know if he actually speaks English enough to like um, Understand that we're talking about him or reading the, the messages that, that we're saying. Oh, hey Max Millie happy to see you back man green shirt helicopters Hey, I, I'm rooting for Bitcoin right now. I'm hoping we can actually go up instead. It'll be um, it'll either be Today so this day candle that we just started here a few hours ago or tomorrow's day candle. I think more more tomorrow's day candle. I think then we're gonna see what happens when we test out that 20-day moving average. Hopefully we're able to keep, stay above it. At least uh, yeah, it's okay if we drop down below, but as long as we close above it, I'll, I'll be okay with it. Let's see. Hey, the pet thoughts on SFM? Should I buy it? Let me see. not on here let me take a quick peek I don't have anything SFM 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 hey I don't actually see anything like that um, safe moon swap safe moon no safe moon no I don't know. I don't know what ticket that is. If you let me know, I can probably try to look it up here. Let's see. Hey, Luis, make it a meme. We chat for five minutes. Member of oh, oh, OMG. Oh gosh, we haven't done that for a long time. That I, I remember those days. Those were things were crazy. I would. I would say give it a month. We're probably gonna be back there at the same time. But we have to like start uh, calming everything down. Hey, Brent. I just keep a, a good bounce between Doge and Cheap. That's a good way to play it. I mean, when one thing pops, you sell a little bit off, and then you take the profits over and over and over again. It's kind of a rinse and repeat for both these at the moment here. 
Sheba has been pretty interesting and I've been liking that one uh, uh, more than Dogecoin as of late. But I have more money invested in Dogecoin because I'm waiting for a big pop there. Mike always with, always with the 100. I uh, appreciate it, my man. Yeah, you know, again, uh, you guys know that my channel is growing a lot slower than the other YouTubers like Final Stand and uh, I don't know, you know, like uh, Tame the Arc maybe. Uh, you know, those other YouTubers. Uh, and so the reason I'm growing slowly is I'm not trying to hype you guys and tell you guys to buy random stuff. Because what usually happens is if I tell you guys to buy something that's really crappy, you guys buy it. Um, not all of you guys, but most of you guys, some people buy it. They lose a bunch of money. Then they come back to the stream saying, oh my god, Michael, you're like you're, you're a hack. You're, you're, you used me somehow, right? Over and over again. It, it, it's the story of most YouTubers, uh, uh, most of these crypto YouTubers or stock YouTubers and trading, trading YouTubers. So... Instead of hyping thing up, I, hyping everything up, I just try to teach you guys some of these basics and maybe a little bit more intermediate stuff as well. But I think it's just much easier to teach you guys that than to try to tell you guys like buy this thing, buy this thing. But unfortunately, if I say buy this thing, buy this thing, YouTube tends to reward that with lots of views. <laughs> All right. Uh, so you know, I just take my time. There's, I'd rather have like a group of like a few hundred of you guys with me for like months on end. And then that way I can actually help you guys grow as traders. Maybe I don't get you guys all the way there, even though I think I can I can at least try. But you know, it's a lot it's a lot better for me and you to, for me to like help you guys out rather than you guys going to another YouTuber who is just gonna tell you guys to buy something that's like worth crap basically and make bad investment decisions because he's getting paid to do so. Some of these YouTubers get paid a lot more money than I do. Well, they, a lot of them do actually, because uh, they they make all these brand deals to tell you where to uh, what to buy. Like um, I, I, uh, some YouTubers are promoting NFTs heavily, and what they're trying to do is they're trying to get you to buy specific ones, um, which is you know fine, but at least like be transparent about what you're trying to do. Let's see. Hey, Shaq, how high do you think a sheep can go when Robinhood accepts? I don't know. I, I, from what I understood, uh, oh, my phone just vibrated. Um, from what I understand, I, I thought Robinhood wasn't accepting sheep, but I could probably say another 20 to 40 percent more for sheep. I think that's a good, good uh, move for like this, this, um, this year. If it goes up higher than that, awesome. But I would say probably another 30 to 40 percent, maybe 50 percent if you're lucky. Let's see. Hey, Luis. Final Stand and Miles Investments are bad channels. Yeah, I see. I don't. I don't really watch any of them. I, I. I should probably look at other channels and see how they do stuff. But uh, you know, I'm sure they have their good points. I'm sure there's reasons why they have like why people watch them. Um, it, it just depends on what you're looking for, though. You know, I don't want to have a high turnover type of channel. Um, I when people need a question to answer, they come to me, right? That's why I don't have people like you know. That's why my streams aren't up all the time. But when people have a question, they come to the stream, say hi. You know, hope you've been doing well. Can you answer this, or can you tell me some technical analysis about this? And I, you know, I do my best to help them out. Hey, Lepet. Oh yeah, Safe Moon. Yeah, okay. Let me check it out for you. Let's see what that's good. That's a good one. Let me go. Safe moon. So it's only down a little bit here. It still hasn't pumped up too much. Year to date. It's, it's gaining ground here. So right now it doesn't look too bad. Can I pull up on trading view? No, it's not on there. Okay, I was just double checking. What I would say right now is this is perfect for buying small positions on it. So every week I'd put a little bit of extra money in here, a little bit of extra money. I could see this popping up in the next month or so and having a nice move to at least 47.15 as the last four digits there. And then that'd be a good play short term. I would not put a bulk amount of money into this at the moment just because I think Bitcoin's going to take a little bit of a tumble. But yeah, I would start taking a little bit, a little bit, take a small position, another small position, another small position. And I think overall this will reward you with some good gains. SRM, yeah, I can take a peek at that as well. SRM. This is down about a percent and a half, not too bad. Oh, okay, oh, this is interesting, okay. Almost a double top scenario here. 
Okay, so if you want to start buying now, you can. I would say let's see if it comes back down a little bit closer to the 200-day moving average. Then you could actually take a, a little bit of a position on SRM. Short term, I think it's going to take a little bit more of a dip down here. Stop loss would be the 200-day moving average. If I'm looking to buy back into this or looking to buy and get bullish about this, if the 200, if the 50-day moving average creeps down a little bit more over the next few days, I could see this coming up a little bit more, trying to have a close breakout up to like now, nah, let's say 9.50 to 10 dollars, and that'd be a good little like a that might take a few days, but that'd be a good play right there. So right now, right now I think it's okay to be buying. I'd really be looking to buy closer to the 200-day moving average though, like somewhere around here, or if we actually break out above the 50, like what we had right here. But I think by this time, we'll actually it'll, there'll be much more force behind it. So it's not a bad play. Let's see. Yeah, no worries, Brett. Happy to help you out. Uh, let's see. What? Let's see. Hey, you're watching anyone ring Secret Fish lately? Uh, Secret Fish was here last night. I was talking with him a little bit as, as well as much as I could with my internet being out. But yeah, he was here last night. It, it's, it's just a Saturday night, dude. He, he has a life. And he, from, like, he's a very wealthy individual, you could say. So I'm pretty sure he's having something. He's doing something really, really, really fun tonight. As we're kind of trying to get up to his level of wealth, right? Yes, Crypto Jebs is like 250 bucks for his videos. Oh, geez, that's crazy. Hey, Ryan. Hey, Mike. Glad to have you uh, have a drink with you tonight. What are you drinking? Um, right now, it's um, Maker's Mark. Yeah. Cheers, everybody. Hold on. Ooh. All right. Good old Maker's Mark handle. 1.75 liters. The funny thing is, so this this only cost me like $43. $43 for 1.75 liters. But they had a 1 liter bottle that was $39. So it made no sense to buy the 1 liter bottle. But uh, yeah, so I'm really happy with it tonight. I'm just drinking and chilling. I'm not drinking too much because I have to take my dog out here pretty soon. Uh, he's currently... Uh, He's currently dreaming at the moment. Let's see. Hey, little old scratcher, you think Robinhood could add BitTorrent Tron since it's very cheap calling Dogecoin? Uh, maybe. Robinhood's going very, very slow in the realms of crypto. I could see uh, other apps trying to do that a lot well, well before that. I think maybe uh, Weeble might try to do a play like that beforehand. Hey, Juan. When did, oh, no, I already answered that one. Hey Joey, we prefer your honesty over hype. Yeah, I appreciate it. Um, oh, and guys, just so, just so you guys know, I'm gonna I'm gonna remind you guys one more time for this. I'm sorry about that. Um, I do have another channel now, which I'm actually posting. Like instead of just streaming every day, it's actually more published videos where I'm gonna do more. Um, uh, let me see if I can find it. Let's just count more published videos and stuff like that instead of just the streams. So let me see if I can find a video. My channel. Okay, here we go. Let me copy this. There we go. And so if you guys want to click on that video, you don't have to watch it. But just like subscribe, I would really appreciate it. These are going to be like, this is going to be where I put all the tutorials and all that type of stuff. I'm paying somebody to do a new thumbnail. This is, so this is like the old one I had for the channel before, um, before I started going like full time on YouTube. So I'm going to replace this one with a more techie one. Somebody made me a techie one. I think I have it somewhere. I just didn't like it. So I'll, I'll figure it out too. Uh, I'll probably use it short term. Yeah. But yeah, I, uh, I should have paid more money for it. But yeah, so uh, if you guys want to follow along and get more like the tutorial style videos instead of just like the streams, uh, that'll be a good place to go as well. And I'll tell you guys, like, I'll show you guys all of my presets for my screener settings. So my breakout, short squeeze, can slim, low PE values, undervalued dividend growth, buy and hold uh, values, consistent growth on a bullish trend, high relative volume, high sales growth, high earnings growth, all this type of stuff. I'll show you guys all those presets. That way you guys will have a much easier time finding stocks and you guys don't have to search through like all 8,000 before you guys find something. Hey Gospel, I'd be taking small positions of Doge at this moment in time. So I'd be taking like 50 bucks a day, or for me it would be 50 bucks a day, but for you maybe like 
you know, 50 bucks a week, like, you know, maybe five five bucks a day. Five bucks a day on Doge is what I'd be looking to accumulate at the moment. Maybe $10 or 15 depending on how much money you have. I'd be looking to accumulate a small to medium-sized position in Dogecoin right now for a possible breakout happening in the next uh, week or two. Hey, Dexter Mills, happy to see you back, man. Yeah, I've been in such a situation before. I was wasting my time watching videos and getting uh, getting uh, much losses in my trading account. So I decided to try Robert's trading service, and these people are crazy. This is freaking hilarious. Uh, yeah. I thought it was a real person, though, too. There's actually a subscriber of mine called Dexter Mills. <laughs> That's why. Oh, man. She making me money. Dexter scammer. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see. Hey, Peter, keep doing what you're doing. It's easy to hype, but a lot harder to teach and tell the truth. People, plus, people uh, got to do their own DD and not rely on somebody else's opinion. Yeah. Well, remember, most people like to most people like to uh, get told what to do until they start losing money. A good example of this is uh, there's a channel out there. What's his name? There's a channel of a guy that specifically gives you guys plays. At first, it was working because uh, back in the market, back 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 when COVID was going on. It was anybody could have made a good play. Like it was incredibly easy to make money, uh, which is why when I show you guys my profits now, I show you guys, hey, I'm not perfect, but overall I'm I'm making money, and that's how you, you're going to be as a trader. You're going to have positions that do well and positions that do bad, but as long as you're net, you have a net profit at the end of the day, you're fine. So, what's the guy's name? Um, he seems like a nice guy. He seems like a very very nice guy. Um, Sane, Chris Sane, there you go. So, What's up? this guy has 468,000 subscribers, but his video is only average about 28,000 a day. 20, yeah, let's say between 20 and 30,000 dollars a day. And back in back a year ago, right during COVID, he was uh, he was he was making like hundreds of thousands of views. And basically, what happened was, uh, he kept on telling people to buy, 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 but you know when the market's only going up. Everybody's making money. You can just tell people what to buy and buy and buy, right? Uh, and that's why you saw me with my profits on stuff like this, right? My Apple calls and whatnot. I guess that wasn't a really good, a good example. There was one where I had a bunch of stuff on it. This, where I told you guys, like Microsoft, FTNT, uh, this was a yellow play, Boeing, AMT, and Apple. I was telling you guys about all these different plays, and I told you guys plays. Now what I'm doing is I'm giving you guys much more specific plays, and I'm letting you guys know, like, hey, be very careful about how you go into this. And I'm going more sector by sector, actually, right now, which is pretty interesting. But we'll talk about that in the other channel. But uh, anything else I need to tell you guys? Um, but yeah, so that's why you guys saw me when, when the market was kind of going a little off and uh, was freaking out a little bit. I slowed down the amount of calls I was giving you guys because I wanted to make sure I knew what was happening in the market before I started telling you guys what was going on again. Um, and you know, uh, it's not like I was making a bunch of money off of those call videos, so to speak. But I I know that you guys probably lost some. You know, I don't want you guys to lose some money off of those those calls. Um, but so there, there's tons of channels like this right now. He's a good guy. He's a really decent guy. Um, from what I understand, I think he just pumps up coins a little too much, and. You see what happened is a lot of people lost money on him. Like, um, oh, I don't know. Uh, let me see yesterday's video. Oh, all these, all these ads in here. Let's see. Yeah, there's a lot of spam on his account. I guess the same as mine. All of it, all of this is spams. Oh, okay. Well. Yeah, okay, it's all spam, never mind. I was thinking it was going to be like different type of like people saying thank you or being bad stuff. It's all just spam, but you know, that's what we deal with on YouTube, right? Hey, Steve and my man. Oh, Steve, excuse me, Steve. Hope you're doing well, my man. I finally have my internet back. Thank God. It was bad yesterday. Oh, Kennedy is also a spammer. It looks like dude's Jesus. Okay, hold on, guys. Hold on. Hey, Brandon, Makers is the best. Yeah, I got Makers Mark because uh, Secret Fish recommended it. I've had it before. It was been a long time. But uh, since Secret was like, you know, get some, I was like, ah, oh, yeah, I'll get some. Plus, he, he donated like $500 one day. So I was like, okay, well, I'll definitely get it. Because I wanted to drink with him on Friday night. Because, uh, you know, yesterday, 
but since my internet was down, I was just like, I, I was so stuck. I was so, so stuck. Let's see. Hey, Kevin, Mikey, gotta put that new link in your channel. So I thought I did, but I, I don't think YouTube kept it for every single stream. So uh, what, starting with the streams tomorrow, I'll make sure to put the link for the new channel down below. Uh, and that way, um, that way you guys will be able to, to uh, uh, click on it a lot more easier. That, that, that is my bad, so I'll, I'll, I'll make sure to do that tomorrow. Hey, doggo. Uh, let's see. Hey, Afron. I have invested six hundred dollars in Bitcoin. Should I get out? Well, it depends. Are you are you buying long? Are you day trading? Are you swing trading? If you're holding long, you can still keep it in there. Uh, if you're short term, you could uh, well short term you could you could buy you could sell right now and look for a lower price over the next few days if you wanted to, um, or you could try to see if we you could just wait to see if we bounce off above if we bounce above the twenty day moving average, right? Short term right here. Uh, let me change this color of this line. Mm. Pink. Pink. There you go. So short term, we are going to run into this 20-day moving average here. There is a chance we could we could uh, we could pop off of this. We could hit support and then bounce back up here to 67. Okay. What I think may happen right now is we may end up falling down below this 20-day moving average and taking a dip back down to 57,000 or something around that level. Uh, maybe well maybe a little bit lower than that. But. I'm not 100% sure because I have, I well, I don't know what's exactly what's going to happen. I'm just telling you guys my personal thoughts. So if you do want to make that trade and you want to sell, go for it. You can always just wait to see if we actually break down below the 20 before you sell. That way, in case we do actually tap on it and break out, you could be you could be a little bit safer and you can actually still be in the position to be looking to ride it up, okay? So you could, you could wait a little bit is what I'm telling you. Oops, that's Doge. I got a Bitcoin. There you go. Do I think one inch is a good investment? I have not heard of it, but uh, most stuff right now is probably going to be a good investment for the altcoin season, so I, I would say probably. Hey, Jacqueline, hello. Hey, Nick, let's hope Doge can at least continue trading sideways until altcoin season. Over the next week or so, I want to see Doge hit 30 cents. I think it can hit 30 cents over the next couple weeks, so preferably this week. Hey, Courtney. Hey, Michael. I just subscribed to your other channel. I see you have an option of uh, option videos. Are you going to be using that channel for options and breakouts? Thanks for everything you do. Yeah, I will be using that one for options and breakouts. I've been posting them a little bit on both, but I think I'm going to do that one because for some reason, uh, I'm, nobody's getting notifications about it. And I, and I I ran a couple polls a few weeks back and say, hey, did you get notified that I posted this video about options? And everybody's like, no, 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 no. And I was like, okay, well, YouTube is not doing something hot right now, so... What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put it on another channel. People that really care about those types of breakout videos and who care about uh, technical analysis, educational content, they're gonna watch those videos. For everybody else that wants to like do the streams and enjoy Bitcoin and watching these price movements and asking questions with me like in a live setting, we'll you know we'll we'll have this channel open as well. Hey Steve, it would be nice to make your Discord more active so you can post breakouts and members get notified immediately since YouTube doesn't do notifications as well. Yeah, that may be interesting. I may actually have to do that. I'm just, I have no idea how to time management all this stuff. I have no idea how people like YouTubers do all this. Uh, maybe because they don't have to like, I, I take care of my mom, obviously. I take my sister to school every now and again. So maybe which is that type of stuff. I have no idea how people have that much time to work. So I'm definitely going to, uh, I'm plus I have a puppy. So I'm, I'm going to try to do some of that stuff. Um, maybe what I'll try to find out here is... Um, I'll take advantage of the next altcoin season when we get a lot more people in the Discord channels. I'll be pumping them, pumping up the Discord a lot. I'll have some mods and I'll try to see if I have some good traders that kind of come along, and I'll ask them to help out every now and again. And maybe, um, maybe I allow them to put their affiliate links in the in the Discord somewhere so they can make some money off of it or something like that. Because I don't, I don't really care about too much about that. I have Discord, I have links in my uh, description, right? So maybe I'll start to do something like that. And then when that happens, I'll try to be pumping out a lot more videos and stuff for you guys as well. I think that'd actually be a good thing to do. I think that'd be actually that'd be a smart move on my part. And uh, so yeah, Steve, I think that's a really good idea. Let's see. Hey, Tony Matic, 
Uh, Matic hasn't been doing too hot. It's down 2.5% so far today. It's been kind of grinding down here. Let's see. Bounce still going up a little bit. Did have a breakout. With Bitcoin looking kind of weak right now, this is coming down below that breakout opportunity now, unfortunately. Um, <clears throat> I kind of sold some of my Matic here that, a few days ago, when it right around here. Uh, what do we have right now? It's not necessarily a bad play. On the 4-hour chart, you could actually see right here. Have we broken down yet? Nope, not yet. Okay, good. There you go. Matic right now, I'd be looking at this trend line right here. I'd sell the rest of it when it breaks down below this trend line right here. If it's able to break out and continue going up, I'm going to hold it. But I sold, yeah, I sold most of mine right here. I didn't buy back in. I'm probably going to try to buy back in if it comes back a little bit here for another for another trade. But this is this is much more of a, a day trading stock for me, per, uh, day trading corn for me personally, as I kind of always tell you guys. So um, I don't like to swing it too much. I like to capture some of these big moves like this, and that's how I like to play it at least. For now, looks like it wants to come down a little bit more. If it comes pretty close to, the, if it comes closer to the 50-day moving or the 50 moving average on the four-hour chart. Uh, or somewhere around here, around, around 156 to 157, I'll look to open up a small position on just for, to play this bounce right there. But yeah, it's okay. Hey, Cheat Code Fitness, happy to see you back, man. Did you hear crypto content uh, creators' YouTube pages being hijacked with malware? People clicking on links in the creators' pages have been recently keystrokes and passwords wiping off people's wallets. Oh, that is crazy. See, did you hear crypto content creators' YouTube pages being hijacked with malware? I have not seen that. If that ever happens, guys, I'll, uh, well, I don't know how fast I would know it was happening. But I would know it was happening pretty darn quickly. But I have the ability to contact YouTube support like really fast. Like so, so when I have a problem, guys, I can contact YouTube live chat support pretty fast. But I also have friends that work at YouTube that I, I know through Discord, and they help me when I have like like real serious problems every now and again. Like if you guys remember back when altcoin season was happening last time. There was a there was a bunch of Elon Musk fake videos telling people to send them like send us. $500 in Bitcoin, we'll send you back $1,000 in Bitcoin. Those types of scams are really happening a lot. And so when that happened, um, when, when that was going on, YouTube actually cracked down on all crypto channels. So if you went to YouTube.com and you searched Bitcoin Live or Dogecoin Live, uh, YouTube would show you there are no videos on this subject or something, something to that effect below, right? And that was freaking a whole bunch of people because nobody knew what was happening. It was just after the GameStop saga, so everybody was saying, we're, we're getting censored, they're trying to crash crypto, they're trying to do all this stuff. And, you know, tempers were flaring, and everybody was going really, really mad. And so what ended up happening was, I talked to my friend over at YouTube, and I had, the, I had the, like, I, I was able to talk to you guys and be like, hey, everybody, because uh, all of you guys were able to find my stream through my channel, instead of going through the YouTube search like most people do. I talked to him and he was able to tell me, hey, Michael, yeah, I just found out they're cracking down because they're trying to stop all these spam videos popping up and they have no idea how to do it. So instead of trying to do the scalpel, right, uh, and trying to like cut out those bad channels that were using Elon's like, you know, fake Elon streams, they decided just to swipe everything, which was crazy because they didn't tell anybody what was going on. So, of course, everybody was freaking out. But I was able to, at least in my channel, I was able to, like, you know, here, I was able to, like, calm everybody down, like, hey, this is what's happening. Relax, everybody. We're fine. Let's continue with, like, watching Bitcoin and Dogecoin. It, back then, especially Dogecoin, right? So, it was, a, uh, it was a very, very crazy, crazy day. Um, but, you know, it, 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 um, with, with all this malware and stuff happening... I am happy that oh well, I change my YouTube password every month just like I trade my I change my all my crypto passwords every month, so I'm kind of lucky in that regard. But my my passwords are usually like 20 plus characters type of things here, um, but you know it you got to be very careful as a YouTube. You have to have very secure passwords. Let's see, they have annoying URL link posts. Oh uh, yeah, exactly. Yep, they yeah, they have a lot of those. Hey, Mr. Rock, have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your night. I'm sorry, I just missed you much about going to sleep. Have a wonderful rest of your night, uh, Mr. Rock. Hey, ready? 
Any suggestions for altcoins about right now? Uh, not really. I would assume most altcoins, if you're buying any right now, you're going to be taking small positions into them. Uh, again, I think Bitcoin's a little bit bearish heading in here for this next week. So I'm just kind of waiting to see what happens over the next few days. If we bounce above the 20 day moving average, awesome. If we do not, that's why I'm a little bit more worried. Um, and since I'm, I'm not sure what's going to happen there, I'm just playing the, the more cautious role. But that, that's just me at the moment, okay? Um, but for altcoins, whatever altcoin you want to buy, most of them are going to be fine. The thing is, you just want to take a small position into them. You might be looking at something like Matic if you want to do a little more of a day trading scheme. Uh, Soul could still pump up a little bit here. F-Team had a good day uh, a few days ago. Could still go up even higher. Um, what else do we have here? In my head, what am I looking at? Uh, sheep has gone up too high. Anything else? BitTorrent can pop off here and STMX can pop off. BitTorrent and STMX have these random pop-offs every now and again. They're due for another one, so I could say those would be some good plays as well. You would, you would buy low and sell on the pop-off and just be done with it unless you're looking for a long-term hold like I am. Hey, DartSpace, say hi and I'll subscribe. Hello, or hi. <laughs> Hey, Mr. Rock, I'm out of Doge, but I hope he makes it too much money. Hey, Michael, long time no see. Hey, Mr. Rock, hope you've been doing well, my man. I appreciate you joining the stream. Hey, Steve, my sister in Baton Rouge also had no internet or cell service last night. I was fine in Illinois, but quite strange. Yeah, I just don't know how so many places around the country can have this, like similar problems. Like, in different corporations. I don't know what was going on, but, you know, who knows. It's it's a weird world we live, <laughs> live in, right? Hey, Michael, why did Dogecoin stay back in the 20s when Bitcoin broke out to new record? Appreciate your content. Well, it looks like right now Dogecoin is just kind of staying steady. Like, it's not doing what we want it to do. I think it's just waiting for altcoin season, and it looks like it's being held back by something. Every time Dogecoin pumps up, it's been getting hit harder and harder and harder, like, harder back down. Right now for Dogecoin, we are looking okay on the weekly chart. Like, on the weekly chart, we do want to break above the 20 weekly moving average here. That is going to be pretty exciting. I think next week or this week, well, this is Saturday, so next week, I think we have an opportunity to hit 30 cents and then try to go up even higher than that. So I'm waiting for that at the moment. Hopefully, it's able to make me some good money, but I know a lot of people are getting slowly tired of it. The only way Dogecoin is really going to get back up to those like all-time highs again, though, is altcoin season with a touch of FOMO because everybody's going to be very excited about Dogecoin the next time it starts pumping up again. We'll have to wait and see how it works out, but you know, right now, I'm still, I'm still okay with Dogecoin. But, you know, just not, not, not a lot of buyers, and it's been getting kind of beat back down by whales when it tries to pump up here. And it's, it's had opportunities to pump up, but when it does, people, um, well, bag holders sell first, and you see whales come down to short it, short it back down to more reasonable levels, for them at least. Hey, Robert Dean, happy to have you back, my man. Oh, hey, Ghostwriter, happy to see you. Hey chef, uh, quick look at cat caterpillar. Hope their uh, hope their uh, strike issues are resolved. Okay, oh, they they gave out their dividends. That's nice to see. So it's still not a buy right now. Oh, and a false breakout of that too. Look at that. Yeah. Let's see. Is that because of the earnings report or? Uh, why well, wanted to let me do that? No, it's fine. Okay, it's fine. Broke came back down. Earnings October twenty eighth. I would hold off on this until after earnings is complete. Short term, though, I would say this is an accumulation zone for Caterpillar. It's been consulting for a little bit of time. I'd probably use a stop loss around here of 187. So I'd be taking a small position in here. Nothing nothing too big. What do we have here? Yeah, breaking down a little bit here. And it did break out of its downtrend here. So hopefully it's just going sideways now. So I think right now it's still okay time to be taking this position. Uh, opening a position here, Chef. But I would say really watch out for these earnings on the 28th. Which I think is the, the Thursday? Yeah, Thursday. So, start accumulating a position, but don't go heavy until after this earnings report comes through. Then you have a pretty good idea of what they're looking like, if they're making good money, if the market's going to like what they said. It's something that you want to be on CNBC after hours to kind of see what's going on. Um, well, actually, hold on a second here. Um, cat. 
earnings is uh, be more before market open, so uh, Thursday morning. So that means oof, I don't know what time zone is, but like a good hour before the markets open, you want to be on TV listening to this earnings report, or not listening to it, but you know, hearing what what happened and what what uh, what people think about it. Hey, YG boy, hur hurrah, boom, boom. <laughs> Let's see. Hoping everybody makes money tonight. Oh, I hope we are. So far, so good. Let's see. Hey, little scratcher, Dogecoin's taking a long nap. Uh, that that could be true right there. Hey, Britt, drew cell phone towers for Verizon will go out all of a sudden or other equipment like that or ray cap, I don't, I don't know. Once they update, once they have to go around updating all the ones to certain certain areas. Yeah, I, I think that could have been something as well. But see, like it was AT and T and Verizon, one of my friends from T Mobile. So I don't I don't know like, like normally it's like when it happens separate, you're like yeah, like fine, sure, like you know the system's just having an issue, they'll get it fixed up and I'll go out around living my life. But it's really weird to see like all everything that I have just kind of go blank and all my friend stuff go blank as well. It was just, it's a weird experience to see. Like normally, like I'm pretty sure there's like there's a reasonable explanation for it. But man, it made no sense at the time. No sense at the time whatsoever. Hey, Justin, hey, Michael Ball as well. Yeah, so far doing so uh, pretty good, my man. Appreciate it. Really boring going through drawing cell phone towers. Oh, jeez, I, I believe it. I hate you, Code Fitness. Thank you very, very much for the Super Chat, man. I really do appreciate it. Thank you very, very much, man. You should Google the story if it happened this past week. A lot of cyber attacks this past week. Thanks for everything you do. I'm a dancer, by the way. Oh, there you go. That's awesome. Ah, I need to get into dancing. I've been going on hikes to lose weight, but maybe I should start dancing on my, uh, my LG TV. It actually has like an LG Fitness Center built into it. I don't know how to use it, but I'm going to try to use it. Probably just some random video crap, but I, I need to learn how to dance or do something. Um... Jesus, cyber attack, cyber attacks, get, oh, re government target ransomware gang revel in cyber attack pushing it offline, sources say, oh, that's interesting, so there's like, it looks like there was a little bit of cyber activity going on, is really October, let's see, seven times a week, Acer, really, Acer, huh, okay, so it does look like there was something going on here, whether it's true or not, you know, we'll figure it out over time. But I, I'm just like I, I hated this. I hated not being able to stream with talk with you guys. Let's see. Hey, Kevin, are, am I going to stream for a while tonight? Since uh, uh, tomorrow Sunday, I'm trying to watch. I'm going to stream for like another ten more minutes, and I have to go take Loki outside. Then I'm going to call it a night. I have to wake up early, and I'm going to go do some grocery shopping for my mother tomorrow. Um, I told her I was going to go downtown, and I was going to buy her some. Um, so like the deli meats that I normally get, or it's like boarhead deli meat or something like that and then there's like other deli meats like at Safeway or like Deeds and Heinz or something like that but I prefer the boar's head but I can only find it in this one store like by me I think so I'm gonna go get a whole bunch of like like deli meats and deli like cheeses and I'm all, I told my mom I, I'll go over there and buy some for her as well so I'm gonna wake up pretty early go do all that type of stuff then I'm gonna go on some errands I'm gonna go say hi to my grandparents and then I got I, yeah my day is pretty busy tomorrow so I'll only be streaming for a couple more minutes next Friday though I will be streaming from um Oh, but don't forget, there's a, there's a 24 hour stream that works well as too. Works well too. Um, but next Friday, I'm going to be streaming from 11, uh, see from 8 8 p.m. to 11 p.m. So it'll be a nice long stream next Friday night. Um, it's just yeah. Normally I take normally I like to stream in the middle of the day Saturdays, but since I still didn't have Wi-Fi, I wasn't able to stream. I just wanted to make sure I streamed at least one day in the last like you know within a three day period of time. Hey Steve, Mike, did you buy any DWAC or fun? Took small position in DWAC, but I was way late. Otherwise, would have gone big had I seen it Thursday. Uh, I personally, no, it was too volatile for me. But uh, I'm glad he made some good money on it. I was watching it for a little bit because I know people were talking about it. Um, I like I, I pretty much like watched it from CNBC. They were like going crazy about it. Uh, I saw it on Twitter people were getting mad that Trump was making money or something like that. And I was like, I mean, like good for whoever can make money in the market like that. That spec was freaking crazy. Uh, but yeah, I, I didn't trade it, but it looks like it was a lot of fun for a lot of people that played it. For me, it's like one of those YOLO plays that I'm just like tossing some money into it and see where it goes. But like, a, uh, what do I call it? Casino stocks. But yeah, it looked like it was pretty fun to trade. Let's see. 
Hey, Mr. Rock. Oh, you and Sheeb too? Yeah, Sheeb's been performing pretty well. Right now, Sheeb is up. Uh, let me take out. Let me go off Doge one here very fast and just hop on Sheeb. There we go. Still popping. This is a five minute chart. Let's go to the 15. Still looking beautiful at the moment. Getting a little bit weaker here, but it's not nothing too crazy. So we'll wait and see what happens here. But yeah, Sheeb right now, guys, looking pretty darn nice. Let's see. Hey, Kane, do I know anything about KDA? I do not. I'm sorry, sorry, man. Um, I, what I would do is I would, I would go to coinmarketcap.com and I would just pull up the website and see if you can find any good information about them. That way you can know if they're, wor they're worth your investment. Uh, I mean, like the, from a money-making perspective, probably going to be looking okay over the next few months because of all coin season. But if you're actually looking for some substance there, I would check out the website and see if you can read their white paper. That's what I usually do when I'm uh, kind of curious about what, what's, uh, what's going on with the, with the company. Hey, Taco Bell Mexican Pizza. They discontinued that, by the way. The Taco Bell Mexican Pizza. I enjoyed that. Uh, yes, she was impressive for the day. Yeah, it has been. Let's see right here. Oh, thanks, Ghost Rider. I did the same thing, but it looks like he beat me to it as far as timing that guy out. Well, let's see. Anybody have any last-minute questions before I head off here tonight? My dog is starting to fart up a storm and it does not smell pretty, so... I do not want to be uh, cleaning up poop off the ground. So, if you guys have any questions whatsoever, please do not hesitate to let me know. Because overall, guys, we'll kind of wrap things up here before I, ha I get a last question or two. I am short-term bearish on Bitcoin. I am waiting to see if Bitcoin is able to hold over this 20-day moving average here. If we are, awesome. We'll be able to bounce off and go even higher. If we do take a little bit of a tumble here and break down below this 20, we're going to test out this 58,768 first. And then if we fall down below that, I think we can come back down here to the mid $55,000 range, uh, possibly bouncing off the 50-day moving average. So hopefully that doesn't happen, but I can see that happening uh, over the next few days as a possibility. On Doge's side, I'm kind of excited for it. I'm hoping Doge can go a little bit higher. Here's Doge on the daily. Just starting a big breakout here that we've been accumulating all the way since August 16th. When this uh, will break, well, we're pretty much going sideways at the moment, but I'm hoping over the next week or so, we're going to have another big run up here. Try to test out 30 cents, and if we're lucky, we'll be able to break it. And on the weekly on the weekly chart here for Dogecoin, I'm hoping we can get a nice big move here, break above the 20-week moving average, and then try to get up uh, over the next few weeks, uh, over the next month or so, 35 cents plus. That's my short-term, uh, well, uh, medium-term uh, analysis is for Dogecoin. I'm hoping for this big pop. Again, we could pop all the way up to 35 cents and maybe come all the way back down to 25 cents again. And maybe something really stupid and crazy like that. Hopefully it's not, but that's that's definitely a possibility. I just want you guys to understand it's still a weird possibility there. But by that time, hopefully it's all coin season. We're just like pumping and pumping and pumping. And Doge is looking to go all the way back up here towards like 80 cents, 90 cents, something crazy like that. Let's see. Anyways, Brandon... Oh, hey, no, no worries, Kane. Let me know if you find anything. And if you want, uh, well, I guess tomorrow or Monday, I'll look up the chart for you if I can find it. Hey, Jason, question. If we make money, what percentage do you recommend taking for fun things? Um, about 1%. 1%. Um, so you can you can think about it in terms of that. If you're making money, how much you want to put into fun things. Or you could just have a separate portfolio that you fund on your own just for, for fun things. So, like, for instance, um, well, okay, if you, if you want to do crypto... You can open up a Bidget account, a KuCoin account, a Binance US account, and you can try to trade like that and have one account to specifically open for fun type of things. I would say, but if you just if you have one account and you just want to like have some money for fun, about one percent, uh, up to five percent if you want to. The way it normally works out, like I I, I will say one percent, but what normally happens is I don't take money out uh, for fun stuff all too often. I'll have a really big play and I'm like. Let's just throw a few hundred dollars in there for the to, for the fun account. That's how I normally do it, um, and sometimes it's more than one percent, sometimes it's less than one percent. But the, like you know, the gist of it is just enough money for you to have some fun with, but not so much money where if it all goes away, you're not going to feel an ounce of regret for trading it in that in that fashion. Okay, that's how I kind of think about it. But uh, yeah, one percent is safe. But if you just have a really big profit, like let's say you put a hundred dollars in and it turns into a thousand dollars. You could put a hundred dollars. You can even put two hundred dollars into that fun account, but then you wouldn't do that. You wouldn't do. You wouldn't put more any more money in there for like a couple more months or something like that. 
reason I'm back is because they discontinued me. How does talk about the, uh, delete me, the Mexican pizza? No way. <laughs> For real, a lot of people love that. Let's see. Sounds like an upset stomach. Talk about pizza. Oh, geez. Hey, Jason. Thanks that that uh, that rush of money you know in your pocket. Exactly. Yeah. Hey, Kay, no worries. Oh, yeah, no worries for the bitch video. I'm going to make another one. I need to make another video explaining how to do the copy trading a little bit better because I feel like people are putting a lot of money in there and I feel kind of bad because I need to, I need to, um, I need to make a bitch video talking about how to uh, lower the leverage, lower the leverage, like 10%, a 10x leverage instead of like 20 or 30 or something like that. Uh, especially during these times of intense volatility. Jesus. Let's see. All right, everybody, have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day. I will see you guys Monday uh, morning around 11 a.m. And then Monday evening as well, towards 7 p.m. as well, guys. So I'll see you guys a little bit later. Uh, have a great rest of your day, everybody. Mr. Rock, I hope to see you guys uh, See you on Monday. Uh, Paul comes back every now and again. Um, Street, I don't remember who Street was, but maybe that's just me. Uh, Lollipop's here every now and again. Um, he, he's, uh, well, she, she's kind of having fun over in, uh, what is it, he? I forget. But, uh, yeah, it's still in Singapore, so still having fun, though. Uh, and we'll see. But most people are just coming in and out. Most people are kind of set, are sitting out until all coin season starts. That's when everything's gonna get really exciting. Let's see. News says Russian hack. Oh, thanks, Britt. See, it's always something. It's always, always, it's always something here. All right, everybody, guys. I will see you guys, uh, sometime, uh, well, I'll see you Monday at 11 a.m. Thanks, everybody.